one time, Mama Agla. Now, why am I saying that? It's because the two part system is a powerful tool that's going to put the power for decision making in the hands of the people. Welcome to day two. It's a rainy day in Cape Town, but we are here for day two. Because the two-part system is a powerful tool that's going to put the power for decision making in the hands of the people. Right? Up to now, US trustees have been making decisions for your members that influences their retirement outcomes. But from the first of March next year, your members are going to be making crucial decisions that will affect their retirement outcomes. Now the question is, if you look at that lady on the slide behind me, she's wondering, is it going to be better or worse, right? So will retirement outcomes be better or worse under the two-part system? It's a brief outline of what I'm going to talk about today. But before we can talk about whether things will be better or worse, where are we now? And the truth is, at the moment, things are not great at the moment. So we talk about stats and replacement ratios in the industry at around 8%. Now, if you need between 60 to 90% in order to retire comfortably, 30% is woefully short of the mark. So it's very clear that something needs to change. We can't keep on going as we are and expecting members to retire on 30% or lower replacement ratios in the fund one day. The first thing is withdrawals. So we know that it allows you to access money, and obviously by taking money out of the fund, eventually when you retire, you're gonna have left, less left over. The second thing, and the second important thing that the, the two-part system does, it brings in compulsory preservation. So what is compulsory preservation? At the moment, if you were to leave your fund before retirement age, you can take out everything in cash. Compulsory preservation says, instead of taking everything in cash, you leave your money in the fund and you can only access it when you reach retirement age. So, two things then, withdrawal is taking money out, preservation is keeping money in. And these two things work in opposite directions. The withdrawal will drop your benefit and the preservation will increase your benefit when you reach retirement age one day and he's contributing 12% uh, to his retirement fund. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some projections for SIPO. We're going to see, first of all, without the two-part system, what is his benefit going to look like? Then we're going to bring in those two factors I mentioned. First of all, we're going to bring in the withdrawals and see how those withdrawals affect his benefit. Then we're going to bring in preservation and we're going to see how does preservation affect his benefit. Right? So, first of all, this is the baseline scenario. So, without the two-part system, if I take C4, project his benefit all the way till age 60, when he's going to retire from the fund, he's going to end up with an 85% base ratio, or if you prefer, a pension of 70,000 rand a month. Now, remember, he was earning 20,000 rand a month. So, with a pension of 70,000 rand a month, he can afford to retire. Right? So, that's not a bad outcome. Um, so, if he wants to stay in the fund, for the full 40 years, in a reasonable investment return, you should be able to get quite a good outcome. Now, try and remember those numbers. Why don't you just turn to your neighbor and say 70,000 and a month. <laughs> Guys, don't like talking to the person next to you. One more time, look at your neighbor, give them your best confidence smile and say 70,000 and a month. 70,000 <laughs> a month. That's a beautiful number. 70,000 full top, 10,000 and that's my safest spot. Will I take out nothing, or maybe I'll go halfway and take out 5,000 there. Every year, SIPO is faced with that, with that decision. How much do I take out of my savings spot? So, let's assume first of all, every year, SIPO takes out everything he can, right? So, whatever's in his savings spot, he takes all of that out. What will that do to his benefit? So remember his pension was previously, how much? 70,000 and a month. Now it's up to 11,000 rand. That's he takes out everything from his savings pot. So with the 17,000 rand a month, he probably could afford to retire. 
a little curve on land, we're thinking twice now. Can he afford to retire comfortably? No, I don't think so. So what does that show you? If you take out everything you can from your savings pot, you're going to be guaranteeing yourself a significantly worse outcome. Right? So he may not have four years of unemployment. So working for 36 years, unemployed for four years, your pension drops from 17,000 rand a month to 2,400 rand a month. That's without any preservation. Right? So 36 years of working and your pension gets completely destroyed. If you look at the next line, with about 10 years of unemployment, your pension drops to about 1,900 rand a month. We're talking about the levels of the state old age pension. And these are for people who are working for the majority of their lives. They're saving in their retirement fund for the majority of their lives, but they're leaving their funds with hardly anything. And that's something you can, you can live on, right? Even if you look at the average scenario of about 10 years of unemployment, you're still getting a 13,000 rand a month pension versus, versus less than 2,000 rand. So what you can see, compulsory preservation makes a massive difference to your final outcome. You look back again, this is without preservation, you're looking at uh, figures around 2,000 rand a month. With preservation, you're looking at reasonable benefits that members can actually retire on. This is why it's so important that compulsory preservation comes in and it actually makes a very, very big difference to the final outcomes when members retire from their funds. All right, so access from your savings spot. So the green looks are is good outcomes. It's favorable outcomes which are better than the ones we have at the moment. Your orange are sort of medium case outcomes and the red, those are bad outcomes. Those are as bad or even worse than what we're getting in the current system. So what is that showing you? There's a range of outcomes on the two-part system. You're not going to be guaranteed to be better. You're not going to be guaranteed to be worse, right? What is crucial? If you look at the 100% withdrawal uh, column, which is the extreme right-hand side, there's no green there. There's no green at all, right? It's mostly red and it's a bit of orange. What is it telling me? If I take out too much from my fund, or take out too much from my savings pot, I'm guaranteeing myself a poor outcome, right? Even with full employment, you guarantee yourself a poor outcome. But if you now factor in unemployment, you can see that most of those are red. But the good news is that there is green on that, on that, uh, on that table, right? And the green comes with being disciplined, not taking out too much from your savings pot, um, and actually making sure that you use it in a financially responsible manner. What is that telling me? As I said in the beginning, there's power in the hands of the people. There's power in the hands of the members. Members need to know that the decision they make from the first of March next year is going to crucially affect their outcomes. If they take out too much, they're going to be in a very, very poor position, but they can use the savings spot in a financially responsible manner for emergencies, for university fees, uh, for, uh, for reducing debt. And if they use it in that manner, they can actually retire one day in a comfortable position.